Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hosanna unto Jesus, our mighty God. I'd like to share a verse from the New Testament. John chapter 6, verse 9. John chapter 6, verse 9. As we open our Bibles, let me hasten to say, did you know that the Bible is the only book that when you read, you read in the presence of the author. You may read a book, you may read a textbook, you may read a publication. You're most probably reading that book in the absence of the author. But every time you touch this word and touch this Bible and touch these holy scriptures, God is there with you. What a blessed experience. And I'm grateful that God can be with us as we read this word. The Bible says... John chapter 6, verse 9, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Can I read it again? There is a lad who is here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many people. A little boy had heard that Jesus would be in town. And so he tells his mother that on the day that Jesus passes by, I would like to walk with that multitude and that crowd to listen to Jesus. As a good mother, she prepares adequately for this wonderful experience. And so, in the morning as Jesus is passing, the boy looks at the multitude and tells his mother, my moment has come. And as the multitude are passing by, he joins this great multitude and off he goes. But before he goes, the mother gives him a packed lunch and says to the boy, like every mother would say to any young man, who goes away into the streets to go and play, to go and enjoy themselves? My mother used to say to me, go, but make sure you come back before sunset. And I would remember those words, and, and I knew that as the sun would set, many more young people would come to the streets and would play. And as the sun, set, it, as the sun was setting, it seemed to me the joy of playing Right in the street was heightening as the sun was going down. And at the peak of my moment of enjoying, now I must withdraw to go back home. Quite difficult. Some of you would identify with that. And so we'd uh, gamble and enjoy in the streets and we'd play soccer. We would, uh, we would you know, do all these crazy things as young people. But you'd always remember at the back of your mind, Mother said, come back before sunset. And if you did not, you knew what would happen to you. And if, if you came after sunset and other boys were passing and that discipline was being meted on you, you'd not want to cry loud because you didn't want other boys and girls to know you were receiving this discipline. So this boy joined the crowd and he went and he hugged his mother and he went away and he joined all the people who were going with Jesus. Now there were so many people. Jesus was preaching, breaking bread. Jesus was sharing himself with the people. People were getting blessed by the word of God. Some had come to see Jesus perform miracles. Some had come to see what manner of Christ he is. Some had come just to follow others. Some were just following the multitude. I don't know why you come to Jesus, but people have got several reasons and different reasons why they come to the Lord. At the end of the day, it becomes very clear, lucidly clear, why you are here, why you have chosen Jesus. And I hope it is because of this one song that we sing, He Saves. So, as Jesus is preaching, the natural begins to happen. When you are hungry, it is demonstrated through 
audio or visual behavior. When you are hungry, the stomach begins to rumble. Audio. When you are hungry, we begin to see the facial expressions changing. And we see the eyes closing. The body gets weak and the, the body is trying to cry out to you, give me something to eat. When you are hungry, you know what to do. When you are thirsty, you also know what to do. But Jesus had taken these people away from the city. Let me submit this morning, God has a way of setting you up. And when God sets you up, let him take control because he's God. Let's stop worrying because he knows what he's doing with his own program. So he sets them up. He takes them out of the city where there is no shop, where there is no farm, nothing whatsoever. There are 5,000 people and these people must be fed. They've been listening to God's word. So Jesus tests Philip and he says to Philip, I see so many people here. What are we going to give them? Then Philip responds. He uses logic. Sometimes logic is good. But I want to invite you this morning to rise above the level of logic and enter into a level of divinity. So that divinity may inform you of the providence of God. So that when we say Jehovah Jireh, we mean exactly that. God shall provide. So Philip says, we even 200 denarii is not able to get enough food for all these people. Now, 200 denarii, it was a lot of money at that time. But the other challenge that they had was they were far away from the city. God had led them. Jesus had led them far away from the city. So now there is no shop. Even if you had money, your money is useless. Have you come to a point where the problem seems insurmountable? Have you come to a point where you don't know what to do? Have you come to a point where despondency visits you? Have you come to a point where calamities and maladies are pressing hard upon you? All you can do is just cry out to the Lord. Sometimes the devil visits and brings feelings of despair. Let me also submit this morning. Feelings are visitors. They come and go. And when they go... Let them go. Because the reality of our existence is that our faith allows us to see beyond the present. Beyond the present circumstances so that as we ask in Jesus' name, we cross over to the better side. So, Philip knows there is no shop. Philip's arithmetic is based on the size of the crowd. When Philip scans the crowd, he realizes this is too much. This is nothing. Then, I don't know how Andrew gets to hear about the story. Andrew gets to hear about the story. And then, Andrew becomes practical. But his arithmetic is based on the small lunchbox of the boy. Philip has his own arithmetic, the crowd. Andrew has his own arithmetic, the food, the small food that is in a lunchbox. But let me tell you, when Jesus steps into the zone to do his own mathematics, things are perfect. They don't get better. The good times begin to roll. Because Jesus knows how to handle any situation. So this boy, when Andrew comes to him, Andrew comes to him to say, hey, what do you have there? This little boy who had his lunchbox packed by his mother. Did I say his mother? You know when your, when your mother cooks, you know your, your mother is the best cook. Until you get married, she's displaced by the wife. Hallelujah. I loved my mother's cooking. And, I, and, and I was, at that time in primary school, I was the only one who would carry a lunchbox to school because other kids 
would eat from the government kitchen where meat and other things were served. And because I was brought up as a vegetarian, they would always come around me to find out what sort of food is he eating. Those of you who know Botswana would, all, would, would gladly understand, Botswana is a beef country. The value of a man in Botswana is measured by the number of cattle he has. And so when you have a lot of cattle, you are a man. And so when there is a funeral, when there is a, a wedding, whatever, whatever festivity we have, there is always meat. And that is why people are dying of crazy diseases because this meat is too much. And so I had an opportunity as a young boy to explain my Adventist health lifestyle. I looked forward to that moment and I told them, this is what we eat and this is how we are surviving. I don't get sick by the grace of God and they would always want to taste my food. What a privilege, what a moment. And I had to lift up my Christ because of the health message. So I always look forward to my mother's cooking because it was wonderful, it was great, it was the best I knew. And then here is a boy, you know, you know little boys or little children, when you give them toys, it's hard for them to share. Children don't want to share. Children are always wanting to keep to themselves. Rarely you'd find children who'd freely give. But kids who are still growing always hoard things for themselves. You keep it to yourself. If you take the toy and give it to another person, probably a stranger, another little boy, or another little girl, the one who owns those things wants to cry because he knows, Mommy, how, how can you give my toys away? They belong to me. They are mine, my possession. Why are you giving them away? So children don't want to share. But here is a boy with a different character. A boy who has this one lunch. And Andrew says to him, what do you have? I have a lunch box. And he says, Jesus needs it so that we may bless the people with food. The boy looks at Andrew and he says, what? Jesus wants my lunch. Anything for Jesus. Anything for Jesus. So the boy knew that this was a privilege. If Jesus required my food, therefore, this must be a blessing in my life. If, 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 if Jesus needs it, and he's the one who saves the world, anything for my Lord. And he gives it to the Lord. He gives everything to the Lord. Can I submit this morning? Do not despise small beginnings. Do not despise small beginnings. A small boy with a small lunch began something of paramount importance. Can I also add, you don't need to have a name to achieve great things for God. The Bible says, there is a boy, there is a lad. We are not told his name. His name is not the son of so-and-so, the son of Uhuru, the son of Barak, the son of Ruguri, the son of Makalonge, the son of whoever, all the popular people that we know. The Bible says there is a boy. We don't need to know his name. We just need to know how he availed himself for God. Therefore, don't wait for a big name to serve God. Do what you can because God has placed you in the right place. God knows what he can do with you, about you, for you, in you, by you. All these things become possible because God is building a story, a story of great miracles. Sometimes solutions come from the least expected person. Who thought a boy would help 5,000 people? Who thought a boy would start the miracle of Blessing 5,000 people. The very people that you look down are the very people who've got solutions for you. Solutions to progress your PCM movement. Solutions to progress your one-year in mission program. Never despise anyone. Small beginnings are important. Everyone in the team is important. A small boy among 5,000 created wonderful energy for the day. God chooses to use weak vessels, small vessels, to demonstrate his strength and power. God can use anyone. Can I also add this morning that this boy was prepared. This boy was prepared. 
He was prepared for the day. How prepared are you for your days? How prepared are you for the things that God is calling you to do? So I want to ask you today. Moses had a rod in his hand. David had a stone in his hand. The boy had a lunchbox. What is it that you have in your hand? God will use it. What is it that you possess? What is it that you have? Give it to the Lord and let God do the multiplication. God can use the small things that we have, the things that we deem as insignificant, the things that we think are not important. The same God who does big things is the same God who can do big things through small people. You know, these disciples had been with Jesus. These disciples had been with Jesus now for almost uh, above uh, two years, almost two and a half years. They had seen Jesus do great things. Jesus had walked on water, but these disciples still could not trust that God can do something out of the impossible. My God majors in the impossibilities. God makes things all possible. You see, friends, when God made the heavens and the earth, he did not need any matter. He spoke things to existence. That's my Elohim. He arranges and rearranges. He didn't need a lunchbox. He just needed his disciples to believe. But because the lunchbox was there, he made the lunchbox a vessel of great opportunity and ministry. God does great things. God majors in the impossible. And so these things that we think are too hard, the Bible says, what is too hard for Jesus? Absolutely nothing. He knows what he must do. Then Andrew brings this lunch box from a boy, gives it to Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus blessed the lunch box. Can you imagine? So, Jesus summons all the 12 disciples. So, they, they come to him, and all of them come to Jesus to receive. So, the miracle is this. The lunchbox is, is in the hands of Jesus. Jesus has blessed, blessed the lunchbox. And then Jesus takes out bread and gives to everyone disciple takes out fish the disciple goes and when their baskets are full they go think for a moment where did those baskets come from come on theologians come on children of God isn't that another miracle where did the baskets come from did they expect food that day no where did those baskets come from another miracle that happened on that day baskets came forth. Hallelujah. Doesn't God call things into existence? Without any matter. That's my God. This is what he did during creation. He summoned things to existence. He said, let there be light. And there was light. The light obeyed the voice of God. The light out of its non-existence obeyed the voice of God to existence. Who are you? Who are you? Not to obey God this time. If the winds and the waves can obey his voice, let's learn to recognize the voice of the shepherd and allow the shepherd to run his course with our lives. Here are the baskets. From one, from one lunch box, God is busy filling baskets. People are watching. They are placed in groups and people begin to eat. Shall I submit this morning? Little is much when God is in it. Five loaves, two fish, the multitude is fed. This mathematics does not make sense. But you see, friends, when God is multiplying, he is God. He does not need to be correct in logical terms. He becomes correct in his own terms because he's God. Let God run the course. Let God do what he has to do. Little is much when God 
is in it. So sometimes we don't know what to do because the problem seems insurmountable. Sometimes we sit on the pallet, subjected to the pallet, sick, stressed, and we begin to remonstrate with God and say, Lord, why me? Why me? Why now? Let me ask you the question, why not you? God says, through these tribulations, we are chiseled into, into the likeness of his character. And that should be our joy. Count it all joy when you enter into devil's temptations. For God, is, God knows what he's doing through you. So, do not fret. Do not fear. Simply trust the hand of God that leads your life. And so as you sit there on your pallet, on your chair, in your house, on your bed, wherever you are, do not think that God is not watching. He just wants you to call. He just wants you to trust in him. And so even before God gives you what you need, glorify him in the hallways. Thank God for a gift that you do not have. Faith. Allows you. Here is your presence. And now this is your future. Faith transports you from the present to the future. Faith is enjoying future results in the present. You are not there yet, but you receive by faith the things that you shall receive. And so you thank God before it happens. Therefore, live in the future while in the present. Let your faith cross you over to the other side. There is no food. There is nothing. There is no money. There is no shop. But through Jesus, who is present, his name is El Shaddai. His name means God enough. When you have God, you have enough. When you have God, you lack nothing. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When you have him, you have everything. So see beyond this, because the great I am is with you. The great El Shaddai, a God who is enough, a God who does not need help to perform. A God who knows what he must do for you. Sometimes we pray and we don't know what to say, because we are thinking only of things that are just here. But let me also submit and say to you, our God is a God of extras. After everyone is saved, 12 baskets remain. Then Jesus, in his stewardship, says, let nothing be wasted. Everything must be gathered and put in the 12 baskets. The Bible ends there. And the spirit of prophecy says, God instructed the disciples, Jesus instructed the disciples that all those things that remained, all the food that remained, the, the, the bread and the fish, all of it should be put in the baskets. And when the baskets have been counted, the same food must be given to those who are recipients of it to go and share with those who are not present. Listen to the grace of God. The grace of God covers everyone. Those who are present and those who are absent. So that they may see and remember that God does immeasurably more than you think or can ever imagine. Out of two fish, five loaves, 12 baskets remained. People were fed, but God ensured that these 12 baskets should remain so that we may practice stewardship. And more than that, we may always remember God does more than you think or can ever imagine. Hallelujah. Never put God in a box. He goes beyond your expectations. He does more than you think or can ever imagine. You have two loaves, he gives you four loaves. Hallelujah. Two fish, he gives you four fish. Five loaves, he gives you ten. You drive a Corolla, tomorrow you drive a Range Rover. You drive a Range Rover, tomorrow you are a pilot in your own plane. God is good. God does more than you think or can ever imagine. You ask for two A's, he gives you five A's. Hallelujah. He does more than you think or can ever imagine. Amen. 
But when you ask God for one wife, he'll give you one wife. Amen. No doubling on that one. No extra on that one. But here is what should remain. God does more than you think or can what? Can ever imagine. He does more. He doubles your blessing. He doubles your blessing. He's a God of extra plus. Extra plus. Find fit in the plus of God. Fit in the multiplication of God. And this is why the psalmist says, Thou anointest my head with oil, but my cup, extra. Amen? My cup does what? Run it over. Another thing, he says, test me, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, and test me, and see if I will not open heaven's storehouse, that there will be meat and extra. God does more than you think or can ever imagine. He goes beyond your expectation. He blesses and he blesses hard. That's my God. I want us to, as we close, to dwell on three things that I introduced yesterday. If you want God to impact your ministry and your life in a certain way, if you want God to do great and mighty things through you. There are three things I want to submit to you today. Number one, be present. Amen? Be what? Present. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Be, present. be present. For the boy to have had such a great impact for the city and for the people, he had to be present. Are we together? He was present. You need to be present. If you want to make a difference, be present. Your absence will do nothing. But your presence will do something. Number one. Can I move on? Number two. Be available. There are people who are present but not available. Let's take it a step further. Be present, and then be what? Be available. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Be available. Can, we, can you go to the last point? This boy was available, wasn't he? And he made everything about him available. Can I tell you something? It is not what you have that counts. It is what you do with what you have that counts. You may have it, but if you don't use it, pointless. So, be present, be available. Can you go to the last one? Be willing. There are people who are available, but not willing. There are people who are present, for you to make an impact. Be present, be available, and be willing. The boy was what? Willing. The boy was present. The boy was available. The boy was neighbor. 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 Be, willing. be willing. What is it that you have in your hand? Is it a stone? Is it a rod? Is it a lunchbox? Glorify Jesus. God will use what you have. God will use what you have. Do not desire the rod that is not yours. Because the rod may kill you. But use a stone because that's what you know. If you don't have a stone, use a lunchbox. And the lunchbox is what God has blessed you with. What do you have in your hand? Present it. Make it available. Be willing to share. And God will bless you. Can we pray together? Are you ready to accept Jesus? Jesus called into ministry for maximum impact, for a revolution in youth ministry in ECD, so that you become available, present first, available and willing. God will bless your service. Is that your desire? Can I see by the raising of your hands? Let us pray.
I want to call my leader, uh, Gary Blanchard, to come forward and bless uh, us with prayer that as we make this commitment, it is a commitment that goes beyond the confines of this wall. God bless you. Father, we stand before you with a sacred responsibility. You have given us the oversight of the next generation of young people. And Father, we do not take this lightly. And just like you used this young man with five loaves and two fish in such a mighty way, Lord, to do something impossible. Father, you can also work through us and these young, young people to do the very same thing. So Father, right now, we commit ourselves to you, Jesus. We see the awesome responsibility before us. We humble ourselves before you. We do not reach for the staff that is not ours. You have called us to one simple thing, Lord. Today, and you've, told, you've called us to, to push forward these two initiatives, one year in mission and public campus ministries, to effectively uh, shake the kingdom of darkness. Shake the kingdom of darkness and God's people free from the kingdom of darkness. In Jesus' name, we raise our hands and we honor you, Jesus. Fill us. Amen.